Yo, what's up guys? You're back with your man, Tech Nick, your go-to guy for videos on the latest tech. Now today, it's about the latest tech once again here on my channel. Today we have the Lenovo Z6 Pro, which is Lenovo's latest flagship phone, rocking all the top specs out there. The phone just launched yesterday and I managed to get my hands on one as soon as I possibly could here in China. But this phone is a monster, guys. And before we get going with the unboxing, let me just tell you why. We have a Snapdragon 855 chipset in. We have 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, which goes all the way up to 512 gigs of storage and 12 gigs of RAM, by the way. We have a stunning black and red color, which has like a red stripe on, which I have over here, included in my 8 gig, 128 gig variants. And then we have this like bluish one as well. So with this phone, we also have 27 watt fast wired charging and reverse wired charging i'll have to test that out but it should be a lot quicker than the current wireless power share that huawei and samsung are currently doing but you'll have to keep a wire on you nevertheless it should be quicker and paired with a 4000 milliampere battery it is lenovo's biggest to date on their flagship series phone guys this phone looks absolutely incredible with five cameras on the back we'll get to that in the unboxing and without further ado guys let's go But this packaging is really neat and it's really cool guys so we're gonna go ahead and open up here whoa so there is the phone we're gonna pop that right up and just put it to the side for now and we'll get to that in a bit so we have this little silicon jelly case which is really nice to see that they've included a case since they never included a case with the z5 pro they have also included a screen protector which they did indeed include in the z5 pro packaging but the z6 pro has gone a step further and included a silicon case as well i do prefer hard cases but this is really cool and it's nice and protective for day one use of your phone so we'll pop that on the phone a little bit later so that you guys can see what that case is all about a usb type c cable now this usb type c cable bear in mind that the phone only supports usb 2.0 speed so when you're doing file transferring it's not going to be the fastest but nevertheless this will indeed be paired with a great wired charging block we have the wired charging block itself now lenovo's previous one was only 18 watts but this should have increased a little bit so we should indeed have 27 watts of wired charging here and we do have 15 watts and we have 27 watts as well so that is a first for lenovo as well that is really great to see and the block is nice and small and it looks pretty good too if you ask me so going on to the next little bit over here i saw that there's something else here and it looks like it's just a little otg connector over here but what is interesting here is it actually goes from type c into usb and that means that over here we have a type c well let me go ahead and open this all because now i'm really excited we have type c to type c for reverse wire charging that is really really awesome maybe i'll give that a go on this video too just to see how it works guys so here is the little dongle in case you want to use regular wire charging when connecting it to the wall adapter that is really epic guys and there is the phone itself. Look at that back, guys. So this is known just as the black version, but it has this red pinstripe over here, and it actually looks like there's a lot of red accents in the black dark finish itself, which is really cool. Any reflections you see there is actually coming off my PC. That is not the phone, guys. And there it is, guys. That is a stunning looking phone, much better looking than their predecessor. So putting the cover on it hugs it really nice. It's nice and slim and yeah, I mean it's a cover guys But it looks pretty good and it shows the phone off pretty nicely as well Throwing the cover to the side and let's see what this phone is actually all about Okay, so let's go ahead and boot it on and while it boots up I'm gonna show you guys around the phone real quick. So at the back here there are indeed five cameras So we have a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera which actually has 125 degree shooting angle Which is actually five more than the p30 pro and two degrees more than the s10 plus which is really great so that's that's the 16 megapixel ultra wide lens then we have a 48 megapixel main sensor guys now with this 48 megapixel main sensor it is not the imx 586 sensor from sony that you've seen so many phones incorporate such as the mi 9 but it actually has a samsung gm1 sensor now what that sensor actually is is it practically shoots a 12 megapixel image and then it uses interpolation to upscale that image 
to 48 megapixels, allowing you to shoot 48 megapixel shots. So what you're actually seeing here is on the spec sheet, it says 48 megapixels, but hardware wise, this is 12 megapixels, but it can shoot 48 megapixels. So you will get those 48 megapixel shots with the great detail, but your regular shots are all gonna be 12 megapixels anyway. And if you look at the previous 48 megapixel snappers, such as on the Xiaomi Mi 9, which actually has a fully fledged 48 megapixel sensor, that phone actually binds all of the 48 megapixels into a greater 12 megapixel shot. So we should see a pretty average Average looking 12 megapixel shot but I will be sure to test this out with the IMX 586 sensor found on the Xiaomi because it'll be really interesting how these two beasts of 48 megapixels actually produce their images and at the bottom over here we have a 8 megapixel telephoto lens for those zoomed in shots so we have a wide shot and a zoomed in shot so that's pretty cool as well and at the bottom we actually have a dedicated hyper video lens over here and this is pretty much only used for video. It is just used to enhance video and make video look better, which is really cool. And I'll have to get to that in the full review and test out if that actually does much of a difference. Now over here we have the dual LED flash and you can't really see it, but tucked next to the uh, LED flash is a 3D TOF lens, which in essence gives you better portrait mapping since it takes the TOF lens, shoots it to the subject, shoots back and then shoots it back to see how far away the distance is between the subject and the background giving you the best possible portrait shot that there is out there. Taking a look around the side over here guys, we have a nice little red looking power button we have the volume rocker keys which are not split at the top we have a headphone jack which is really cool to see that the nova have actually kept there looks like we actually have an ir blast over here i'll have to get to that in the full review though at the bottom of the left over here we actually have a sim tray and there actually is indeed room for an SD card. So over there you can see that you can pair two SIM cards or you can put an SD card which occupies SIM slot 2 which is really cool to see since this was not on their previous device that Innova brought us. There at the bottom we have the USB Type-C ports of course and then we have this wonderful speaker which actually has a bit of a different looking design. It has the middle hole which is actually a bit stretched so I'm kind of digging that. I think it looks pretty cool. And then at the top here we have the dewdrop notch over there and then above that we actually have a second speaker now this is the earpiece but this phone is paired with Dolby Atmos sound so it should in essence give stereo sound coming from the earpiece and the bottom firing speaker which is great. So moving on to the phone itself we are paired with ZUI 11 uh, so coming up from ZUI 10 seen in the Lenovo Z5 Pro. This is actually skinned on top of Android 9 Pie where the previous one was just Android 8.1. So we're going to go ahead and add our fingerprint over here guys. Now this is an optical reader, it is Lenovo's second iteration of the scanner, but it is said to be able to use with water. So after we're in the phone, I'm actually going to get a glass of water and test that out right here on my video for you guys. But for right now, let's go ahead and place our finger on the scanner and get it all set up. Settings completed. Let's go straight into the phone. And there it is guys, so this is indeed a 6.39 inch AMOLED panel which is indeed from Samsung themselves. So this is a really, really good looking panel guys. I must say it definitely looks a lot brighter than their predecessor and it really is looking great here guys. So let's go ahead and test out this fingerprint sensor real quick. And we're in. Let's try again. Oh, in again. It's actually really accurate guys. So. It is really great, but we're gonna go ahead and test it with some water. Okay, so I've got my little glass of water here, guys. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dip my thumb in it and see if the scanner still works. Nice and wet, let's go ahead. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, guys, so Lenovo's claims that this will work when your finger is wet is wrong, guys. So if you wanted to take a swim and use your finger for the fingerprint scanner, it's not gonna work. So just like all other phones, this does not work when your finger is wet, but what they do indeed have this time around, since they do not have that huge pull down mechanism for the front selfie cam, since it is embedded at the top there, which is 32 megapixels, we can indeed go ahead and set up the facial recognition system. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and test out my face. Let's go. Enroll complete, guys. Let's see how quick it goes. Three, two, one. And we're in. Three, two, one. And we're in. So it has like a little lock animation over there, but it's still pretty snappy. It's definitely not the fastest out there. But if you do have wet fingers, 
You now know you can't use the fingerprint sensor, so at least we have facial recognition, which is a huge plus for me, guys. And before we wrap this video up, I want to go and test out this reverse wire charging, guys. I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see how it works out. Okay, so I have got my P30 Pro here on the right hand side and the Lenovo Z6 Pro on my left. Let's go ahead and hop the P30 Pro straight into the Lenovo and see if it works off the get go. Let's see if anything happens. Okay, the Huawei is now powering up. That's really cool to see guys. Okay, there we go guys. It is indeed charging. So just like that, you don't have to hit anything in order to set it up you just need to plug another phone right into it carry a little cable around and you'll definitely get faster charging speeds compared to the current reverse wireless charging with this reverse wired charging it does suck you have to carry around a cable with you but the cool thing about it is that you and your buddy can both use your phones while you boost his battery so there you guys have it the lenovo z6 pro now guys, I know that in my review of the Lenovo Z5 Pro, I said that they have some serious issues. Now, I will definitely look into them to see if they have been resolved. If you guys have yet to see that full review, be sure to hit that card above right now, just after this video. But as for the Z6 Pro, as I see it as of right now, Lenovo are moving forward in the right direction, guys. These colors look incredible with five cameras at the back and the ability to be able to charge your mate's phone using wired sharing as opposed to the already existing wireless power share seen on Huawei and reverse wireless charging seen on the Samsung phones. We have a really snappy fingerprint sensor here guys. I'm really enjoying it and the facial recognition is also really great. We have a huge 4000 milliampere battery and if it goes by anything which the previous 3350 milliampere battery that was found in the Z5 Pro did in my test with an older 10 nanometer chipset which lasted the same amount of time as the Huawei Mate 20X with a 5000 milliampere battery. I can't wait to see how long this thing lasts. Paired with a 7 nanometer Snapdragon 855 chipset in and a 4000 milliampere battery, this thing should last at least two days of general use guys. I'm really excited to do a full battery drain test on this and the other phones that have recently been on my channel. So make sure you stick around for those guys and ugh, this phone is just, I don't know, it has a little kick about it and the best thing about this phone is it's $430 starting guys 6 gigs of RAM 128 gigs of storage and you can expand that storage using a micro SD card which is really epic and with all that storage you can throw all your music and all your videos on since you can then sit there and be immersed using wired headphones with a headphone jack which Lenovo have kept around Guys, there's no wireless charging in here. There's no IP certification as well. So I cannot say that this is the best phone around, period. But this is definitely one of the best flagship phones out there. And I definitely think that Xiaomi should be a little bit scared since the Novo is coming right up there and banging heads with Xiaomi's Mi 9 because this pretty much packs everything the Mi 9 has in it. And it's cheaper and it throws an SD card in. Um, there's no massive camera bump, guys. There's no wireless charging, but that's about it. And there's an extra camera. I'm really excited to see what this phone is all about in my full review, guys. So stick around for that. I'll definitely be sure to touch on every aspect of this phone. And until then, I will be doing charge tests, drain tests, camera tests, so on and so forth. I'm really excited to give this phone a run for its money, guys. I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this video as much as I have done unboxing this phone. Until next time, guys, this is Technic.